In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of the data adapter within ADO.NET. Now, the data adapter plays a very special role within ADO.NET. It allows us to interact with data sets in a very special way. Uh, it is the glue or that which binds the data set and the data connection together. Since data sets are by their very nature disconnected, meaning that once you put data into them, there's no connection between the data set and the, the, the data source, uh, you need some way to sync the information back up once changes have been made in the data set. So say you do inserts and updates and deletes uh, to a data set. Now there's got to be a way to take all those changes and resolve them back into the original data source. And that's what the data adapter seeks to do. So what I've done is create a simple little application here. And I want to walk through it just to illustrate uh, how the data adapter works, what you need to do to set it up. You're going to find that if you have to do everything with the data adapter by hand, it can be, become quite burdensome. However, near the end of this video, we're going to talk about a quick way to, um, to set up the data adapter and to uh, use data sets. Now, the problem with uh, talking just about the data adapter is that it's so tied to a data set because that's its true purpose in life uh, that it's hard to illustrate it without going into data sets. But just take what we say about data sets at face value. Let's not really think about them too much, and, and we'll talk about that in a future video. But what I've got here is basically two command buttons. I have a simple text box, which I've made multi-line, and I've added a, um, a uh, scroll bar to. And then I have a data grid. This is We're using uh, Windows uh, Forms. And the data grid in Windows Forms has a special ability to be able to kind of bind to the data set and become one with the data set. So when you make changes to uh, the, the data in the grid, they automatically get propagated as changes into the data set. Uh, that's very important because we won't have to write any code to get all the update functionality, any of the, uh, uh, any of the deletion or insertion functionality with, while we use the data grid. So let's take a look at our code behind for uh, the little example that we created. First of all, notice that I did an import system.data.sql client. We're going to need that uh, reference to the namespace so we don't have to type that out every time. Then, basically, in the, uh, in the public class for Form 1, I've created some instances of things, such as uh, a connection to the pubs database from SQL Server, which gives us uh, the data that we're going to use for this example. Then I've created four SQL command objects, and I've called them the select, CMD select author, CMD insert author, CMD update author, and CMD delete author. One of the things about the data adapter is that it has four special properties, and those properties map to SQL command objects that you have to pass in. And those four special uh, methods, or properties rather, um, are for the CRUD operations that you can do on a set of data. For example, uh, create, read, update, and delete. You can do a, select, a selection, an insertion, an update, or delete. And so we've created four data commands, and we're going to populate those data commands uh, with, um, with uh, SQL statements that will be executed whenever uh, they're called by the data adapter. Then I've created the data adapter object itself and also have created a data set called dsauthor. Now, the next thing that I do is in the form load. Uh, I have a little note here that um, uh, of, of what basically is going on. Now, you'll note that in, uh, later on in the video, whenever we create these automatically, uh, create the data adapter and all the data commands that go with that data adapter, that it puts similar code to what we've done in the form load event into the initialize. However, I don't like messing with anything that says Windows form designer generated code. Actually, when I was creating this example, I had some of my code in here, made some additional changes to the initialize event. Let's see, let me scroll down to the initialize event. So yeah, right here in the initialize component event, I put some of my code in there and then uh, made some changes to the form and uh, Visual Basic, or rather Visual Studio, just kind of erased everything I did. So I'm a little leery about doing anything in that section of code. So 
So from now on, I'm putting things in the form load uh, unless I have a good reason not to. So at any rate, here in the form load, what we've done is set the connection string. That should be nothing new there. We've talked about connection strings and how to create a connection to a database before. We need that. The next thing that I've done is I populate the data adapter's SQL command property to the SQL command object that we created earlier. Did the same thing with the insert command, the update command, set it to an instance of the update command object, and the delete command. Now what I do is for the select command, and for all the commands that we have, the select, the update, and the delete, and the insert, we set two properties. The command text, which is actually a SQL statement, or it could be a store procedure name, uh, where we're going to, in this case, select data from, and then also for that select command set the connection object. So the next thing I do is the same thing for the update command. I put in the, the command text, which is a SQL statement. This is a rather longer SQL statement with notice I have parameters within there so I can update and set the last name equal to the parameter last name, the first name equal to the parameter of the first name, and so on. Now, whenever I create parameters, within my command text, I need to also create parameter objects for that command object as well. So I have my data adapter author dot update command dot parameters dot add. And notice that I have the author ID, the database type, the size of the database type, and then this last one is the source column. Now if you're going to use the data grid you have to use the source column. If you don't, you'll get an error. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a few moments. We'll try to break our application and so you can see the error handling within the data adapter as well. But at any rate, so we, we set that for all the parameters for the update command. We do the same thing here for the delete command. We have a delete from authors where author ID equals the parameter author ID. So I have to create another parameter object and add it to the parameters collection. And then finally, the insert command, I set the, the command text for the insert statement, set the connection property, and then add the parameters for that as well. So that's everything I do in the form load. Now, let's take a look at the first button we have here. It's the fill adapter button. And what I've done here is actually attempted to uh, connect to the database call the fill command of the data adapter. The fill command is important. This is what takes the command from the select statement. So the select command property and execute that and take the value of that and put it into the DS author. So we have to put it into a data set. And we created this data set earlier at the very top. Um, and then also we can give it a table name within the data set, and we're going to call that table name authors the same name as the table within SQL Server, so there's no confusion. And then I'm going to close my connection. And then, in order to bind it to the data grid, I'm going to call the data grid set data binding method, passing in the data set name and passing in the table within the data set where it's supposed to retrieve its values from. So let's go ahead and run that application. Go ahead and click our button, and in just a moment, notice that our data appears. So we've successfully retrieved data from our data adapter, put it into a data set, and then bound that data set to our data grid. Let's close the application. The next thing that we want to do is take a look at this update data adapter. This is when any changes that are made within the data grid will get propagated from the data set back into the original data source. So what we have here is a simple one statement for the data adapter. Whenever we click that button, it'll call an update method, and we pass in the dsauthor.tables author. So we're passing in a table object, and we're specifying one specific table within our data set. In this case, it's the only table within our data set called authors. 
if there is a problem, it's going to catch it with SQL exception, and we're going to pop some message boxes up. We'll flex that muscle in just a moment. Um, but uh, at any rate, I want to talk about two additional things in regards to uh, the calling the update method. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, that when you call the update method, it's going to use, for any row that's changed, it's going to call either the command for the update, the command for the delete, or the command for the insert. So that's why we set those earlier, so that it knew the, the store procedure or SQL statement that needed to be used, all the mappings for the parameters, and then makes the appropriate choice based on what has changed in a particular row of data. The second thing I want to tell you is that there are events that you can capture on the data, event, uh, data adapter. There are two events. Right before the row is updated, you get a row updating event. And then right after it has happened, you get a row updated event. And in here, what you can do is um, retrieve some information before uh, a row is going to be uh, updated. You can even cancel the updating of that row if you choose to based on some programmatic logic you have. Or you can, as I've done, just grab off information to print to a uh, log screen. And so you can kind of keep tabs on what's happened. So in this case, whenever the row is about to up be updated, any row for any reason, we're going to set, um, show the status of that row, what type of update is about to happen, is it an update or delete or whatever. The command that's going to be called, so the actual C, um, SQL statement that will be called. And then the in this case, I just plucked off one uh, column of information within that row, in this case the author ID, and I'll display that. But we can access any row of data uh, in that uh, data set before it's updated. And I've done pretty much the same thing for the row updated event, as you see here. And the only thing that is different is that I've also got another uh, uh, value that I can access, which is the records affected. So what's passed in is this system.data.sqlclient.sql row updated event args. And so that's how I'm able to get at a lot of these properties by e.status, e.statement type, e.command, e.row, e. so on. Now the last thing that we have access to within the data adapter is if there's an error whenever the fill is occurring. So in this case, uh, if there's a problem, error filling data adapter, we can display the table, the error message, the stack trace message. Again, what's passed in is a um, system.data.fill error event args as the value E, and then we can hit uh, e.data table, e.errors.message, e.errors.stack trace, and so on. So let's go ahead and run our application this time. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the fill data adapter. I'm going to change Dean Stinson to Dean Sullins. And I'll also, uh, let's see if we can delete a row here. We'll delete Ann Ringer. I basically selected the row and then hit the delete button on my keyboard. And I could even add a new one, but that'll be enough. We should see now two events happen whenever we click the update data adapter. Okay, and when I hit the update statement, I got a uh, I got an error that said that the delete statement conflicted with a column reference. So there was a constraint that tied the um, the the um, author's table with the title author table. And so we can't do this, but I think you get the idea. We get some error messages. Actually, this exercise, the uh, the error handling before I intended to. But at any rate, you can see in the first case that we're updating row, and it tells you uh, what type we're going to update and um, whether it was successful. In this case, you see uh, one row. And then it starts to do the, the update and perform the delete, and um, rows affected were zero because we have a, an error. 
So um, basically what occurred there was that uh, we ran into um, one of our update catches. So whenever we tried to perform the update, it caught a SQL exception and it popped open a couple of message boxes that let us know why it, that couldn't take place. The last thing that I want to illustrate in this video is how hard it was to type in all those statements about creating the connection, the commands, the parameters, uh, creating all the code for the, um, for the data adapter itself, how we can alleviate all of that with simple dragging and dropping from Visual Studio.net. So I'd be uh, remorse if I didn't show you an easier way to go about it. But I felt it was still important that you learn the hard way as well so you can really come to appreciate and know what's going on behind the scenes. Um, I'm just dragging and drop, dropping the buttons into place just like the previous application. I'm not going to spend a lot of time changing properties or things of that nature. Um, just want to get it going kind of quick so you can see how it works. Looking for the, uh, the data grid. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we'll put that into place. Actually, we're not even going to use this. What we'll do is go to our authors table, drag and drop. Sorry our database diagram, what we want to see is the actual table itself. There we go. We're going to configure our data adapter. Create the SQL statements. It generated everything for us. We didn't have to type in the select, insert, update, and delete statements. We're also going to generate a data set. That looks great. Add an instance of that to the designer. We'll select that and go to the data source. This will be uh, its authors one. Select the authors table. And then all we need to do is type in some code. And then we'll also do the update. And so we've only written three lines of code, but we're going to get the exact same functionality out of our application. So if all goes well, And I think I need to actually stop this. Yeah, it's the old one. Sorry about that. Whenever you're doing this example at home, don't forget that you need to change your project properties to go to the new form that we've created. And we're going to click button one. And notice that we have our data adapter. We're going to change Solms back to Stinson. And click button two. And the update was successful because it didn't give us any errors. And I'll even run it again so you can see that Solms is now Stinson. Just to prove that there's nothing up my sleeve. Let's go ahead and run it again. And there you go, Dean Stinson. So there you go, in just a few uh, short uh, strokes of the mouse and a few lines of code, we've done exactly uh, what we did in about uh, 30 or to 50 lines of code. 
notice what's done for us automatically. A lot of the magic is performed for us um, by Visual Studio. Notice that it created the connection object, the data adapter, all the commands that it uh, created a new data adapter. Um, also notice as we go down here, it set the grid properties, the data adapter, setting the insert, delete, select commands appropriately, doing all the command text, setting all the parameters. Wow. Just imagine if you had to type all this. I did, and it took me a long time to do it. So I would definitely encourage you to not use the, uh, the manual way, but... Uh, uh, definitely use the automated way, but know what's going on behind the scenes. And that was really the purpose of this video. So hope you enjoy this video. Thank you.